Throughout my life as a pastor, I have met many people worried, telling me that perhaps their Christian life is sort of bland without much enthusiasm, that instead their Christian life is sort of plain, and this generates frustration, causing many Christians who have began their Christian life not to advance and desist along the way. Good morning, I am Pastor Carlos Rios, and this is our devotional mana, a daily adventure with God. In regards to this topic, I mentioned when we began the introduction of this topic of the Holy Spirit, that truly the presence of the Holy Spirit does mark a difference. You will come to the same conclusion I have come to regarding the comment I am about to make. Imagine this, Jesus spent three years teaching his disciples. In these three years, he taught them how to pray, how to read scripture, how to pray for those who were sick, to love those who are lost, the Great Commission. But despite Jesus being with them three years, impacting their lives, teaching them, but it was very surprising to me when Jesus tells them to not leave Jerusalem. Do not begin the ministry until the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And so Jesus himself warns them that what they know can be simply knowledge or simply human ability if they do not have the coverage of the power of the Holy Spirit. And so do you understand what I'm saying, my dear family? This means that there is an ingredient that is vital. It is surprising to me what the nature of salt does in elements. For example, with rice, if we do not put the salt into the water before the rice is prepared, prepared, then the salt will not impact the complete nature of the rice. And so the rice ends up bland. And if the rice is bland, no matter how much salt you try to put on top, it will never taste the same and perhaps not taste good at all. And so the ingredient must be placed before in order for it to impregnate the whole nature, in this case of the rice. And the same thing happens with us, with the Holy Spirit. If the ingredient is not in us, the ingredient of the Holy Spirit, the personality of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit as a master, as God, living in our lives, then our Christian life is going to be simple. And so you will pray, but you will not enjoy praying that God does not listen to you, not feeling God's presence, not feeling that God listens to you. There are Christians that read scripture, but they do not understand anything. And so as a conclusion, they do not read, continue reading because they do not understand. They cannot comprehend. So do you see, this is a simple Christian life, simple, plain, bland, and why? Because it does not have the ingredient of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes everything. And allow me to tell you that the change is impactful. And I want to give you an example. Peter himself, who in Matthew 16, who tells the Lord, do not die on the cross. The same Peter who in Matthew says to the Lord, I'm not going to deny you. I'm going to walk with you to the end. The same Peter who denied Jesus, who ran fleeing and who was not present, not even when Jesus was going to the cross. Peter, who in the upper room, along with the others, were taken over by fear, saying, well, if Jesus was crucified, what's going to happen to us? And so what was going on in the lives of these men? They had been with Jesus. They knew scripture. They knew what the Lord had spoken to them, but they were lacking the magic ingredient, the supernatural ingredient. And I believe that this is the same ingredient that the majority of Christians are lacking. Because if we do not know the Holy Spirit, if we do not know his work, we are missing out on him coming to bring brightness, flavor, enthusiasm, purpose, and joy to our lives. Today, I find hundreds of Christians along the way that carry out the task with joy, with passion. I find people sharing about Christ in universities, even if they are rejected. I find others bringing the gospel to impoverished areas where truly there is much need, where people perhaps are more interested in food and not as much in hearing about God. But despite of this, they carry out these beautiful tasks, works of evangelizing, of service. And I know so many people committed. And I ask, what is going on in their lives? What do they have? They have seasoning. They shine bright. What do they have? They have the Holy Spirit. 
that perhaps may be the contrast to what many Christians do not have. And because they do not have the Holy Spirit, then they do not feel passionate to love those who are lost, to go, to carry out the work, to serve God, to pray, to carry out a prayer, but a prayer with power. And so do you want this life of power? Do you want this, this ingredient that beginning today tells you that you will never be the same? So take your agenda and write down all these verses that I'm going to give you because I'm going to lead you through some verses, not of all, but of some that shows you how the lives of these men were never the same again after the coming of the Holy Spirit over their lives. It was never the same again. And the same with you. Your life is never going to be the same again with the coming of the Holy Spirit. Throughout the entire, the entire Bible, the Holy Spirit and His power came upon those who needed it, who asked for it, and the manifestation of His presence and His power were perceivable precisely to these people. Zechariah 4, 6 says that the Holy Spirit says about the Holy Spirit that it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. So it is not by might nor by power nor by human wisdom. It is with the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul describes it to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, allow me to talk to you about something marvelous I find in the Bible. The Bible says in Luke 4:14 4, that the first one to experience the power of the Holy Spirit was Jesus Christ because he began his ministry in the power of the Spirit, says Luke 4:14. 4, Luke in chapter 1 verse 35 identifies the Holy Spirit as the power of the Most High who would come upon Mary and produce this beautiful birth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And so I mentioned what was the secret of Jesus' ministry, his miracles, his works. Do you know how he carried these out? Read Acts 10.38 with me. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power in how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. And so imagine these verses that I am reading to you and that you are taking note of. The Holy Spirit is associated with a power that he gives his children with a special power that makes your life no longer the same, that makes you experience something supernatural. This Peter, who in many occurrences of his natural life learned but often was an insecure man who sometimes spoke too much or made decisions without thinking. Now here, the Peter that we find in Acts is one of the most spectacular leaders of the church, a wise man, a man now making decisions that were based on the Bible, a man who follows God's voice. And so the Peter we, fi we find in the book of Acts is far from the Peter we spoke about or we read about in the Gospels. And so what marks the difference? The difference is marked in Acts chapter 1 when Jesus gives them a promise and he says to them, you will receive the Holy Spirit. And in chapter 2, they receive him. The life of the disciples was never the same again. And why do I want to talk about this with you and bring this to your minds while discussing all these verses? Because I want you to experience the same. I want you to live this in your personal lives. The Apostle Paul's wish as he wrote all these verses was that the members of the church in Rome in Corinth would abound in hope, look, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Of course, in the same way that Jesus Christ had worked on him with powerful signs, prodigies, in the power of the Holy Spirit, says Romans 15, verse 13. All these verses speak to us about the same. And when in this morning I want the Holy Spirit to speak to your life, think about this. What would you like to do? You who sometimes feel the urge to go and speak about God, but you say, well, I am not capable. I can't. I am too timid 
or you who sometimes when you pray, you say to yourselves, well, I want my life to be a fruitful life of prayer, a life of prayer with power, where I, when I pray for long, long periods of time, where I seek God, where I can experience his presence. Well, all these elements will come upon your life the day you understand everything that the disciples understood. The disciples received an express order on behalf of Jesus. Do not leave Jerusalem before the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And so this clearly teaches us that anything that we do as Christians, anything we want to have an impact, we must first invite him. If we do not invite him, then it will not have an impact. Our life is going to be like that rice without salt. Something simple that nobody wants. Bland, tasteless, that no one likes. And so how wonderful that the Holy Spirit this morning is inspiring your heart, telling you that if you are a Christian who has always felt a lack of power, a Christian who does not see a sense in life as a Christian, who does not find great gratification in the daily walk as a child of God, I believe that what is lacking in your life has a name, and if you understand it this morning by the Holy Spirit, then He will come upon you. Because the Holy Spirit comes over those who ask for Him. The Holy Spirit comes upon those who long for Him, who wish for Him, and those who truly desire that the supernatural presence be a reality in their lives. Jesus Himself experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Himself lived and carried out His miracles with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And so this is what it's about. They were the best duo because Jesus allowed the Holy Spirit to fill his life. He allowed the Holy Spirit to flood him with power. And this is the same that we must experience each day. Pray with me this morning. Father, thank you for this morning because today you came to speak to my life to tell me that there is an ingredient that is going to change me. There is an ingredient that is going to give sense and purpose to my life as a Christian to my readings, to my prayers, as I read the Bible, as I share my faith with others. And this is the coming of the Holy Spirit. You promised, you promised in your word, Holy Spirit, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. Raise your hands to heaven and say, Today I ask God and I ask Jesus of Nazareth to send the power of heaven over my life. I do not want to live just a normal life or a natural life. Instead, I want to live a life where I see miracles, witnessing supernatural acts, praying prayers that truly reach heaven, and making the Bible my daily manual, my daily spiritual nourishment. Lord, fill each person who prays this prayer this morning and allow them to experience your presence and your power because this is not a story tale or a myth. It is written, it is a promise that you would pour out your spirit over all flesh and would give, give power to all men who believe and who are convinced of this promise. Thank you for this day, for this time, and thank you for being with us. Amen and amen in Christ Jesus. Blessings to all. The manna was daily. It was collected very early in the morning. Each one collected according to their need and was collected by families. Very, very good morning. Welcome to this devotional time where we get up to seek God's presence and his word in the lives of each and every one of us. Manna, the daily spiritual food that cannot be missing in our lives, led by Carlos Rios in the voice of John Vidal.